Now it's really amazing to see the level of detail of these architect's drawings of my garage conversion into living space. Now the only thing the architect has not included is the location and number of power outlets, light fittings and light switches. And so in today's video I'm going to share everything that we've thought about before we got the electrician round. Then I'll share some of the mistakes that we've made and also share the process of how do you actually wire you know, a garage or slash tiny house nowadays. So I hope you get some insights from this video. It's everything to do with electrical work, so let's get right into it. So before I called the electrician in to carry out all the electrical work and wiring, I thought the DIYer that I am, I wanted to understand what kind of electrical work am I legally allowed to do in my own house, just so I could save some money. So I found the list on worksafe.govt.nz that outlined the kind of work that you're allowed to do in your own house. And I was really surprised with the extensive list because you can remove and replace uh, switches, socket outlets, light fittings, um, you can even replace water heater switches, uh, connect, disconnect fixed wire appliances, relocate existing switches, socket outlets, lighting outlets, uh, the list goes on and on and um, at the end of the day I wasn't trained or confident enough to carry out this kind of work myself and I didn't want to take any risk when it comes to insurance um, you know causing a fire and perhaps even voiding my insurance claims in the future so I decided to leave this to the professionals and got the licensed electrician in. So this is the plan of our proposed bedroom conversion and I want to take a minute to walk you through all the things that we considered before installing our power outlets, light fittings and light switches. So as you can see these red marks here, that marks exactly where we've installed our power outlets. The first tip I want to give you guys is try to install power outlets wall to wall. The reason this is beneficial is because it's just cheaper. You have to drill less holes through the timber, you have to use less cables to achieve it. So that's why here in the bedroom and the lounge we've chosen this location for the power outlet. Second tip is install enough power outlets once the walls are on, the jib is on, it's painted, it's extremely difficult to retrofit a power outlet. So have a good think about it, where you wanna place your power outlets before the electrician comes in. The other thing that I wanna talk about is light fittings. So we've chosen to have four lights in the lounge and I wanna talk you through where you should place the light switches, um, especially in this scenario here, let's say you have a bedroom with two entry points. So you wanna make sure you have a light switch at each door. We forgot this light switch here and it's really painful because at night when you enter through this door, you have to walk all the way to this side of the room to switch on the lights. And yeah, it's just not a pleasant experience really. And it's a shame because we can't really do much about it. Uh, we've done the same thing here. So in the lounge, we've um, installed a light switch here, uh, close to the back door, and also another light switch when you exit the bedroom entering the lounge. How do you install these lights so that they're symmetrically perfect and they have evenly spaced. To my surprise, it's not about measuring the, you know, the distance on the on the ceiling. The electrician measured the floor first and then he placed a laser on the floor that then illuminated the exact spot where he needs to drill in the ceiling and that's how they've achieved even spacing between all the lights so it looks, you know, professional. The other thing we had to decide was the kind of lights that we wanted. So we went for a combination of LED lights in the ceiling and some wall hung lamps as well uh, that will give us the option of just creating a bit of an ambient feeling in the house if we want to. And uh, with LED lights you have to choose warm white or cool white or they call it natural light as well. Bedrooms and lounges you tend to go with warm white uh, versus in bathrooms, kitchens and office space you might want to go for natural light. If you pay attention in the modern new builds uh, the lamps in the ceiling are usually about 90 mil diameter. They're quite small versus a house that is 
20, 30 years old, you'll find there they've got the big 120, 160 mil diameter lamps still in there. And that was pretty easy. I mean, the electrician had to come back after the plumb, uh, after the builder put on the jib. The jib stop came in to sand it all down. The painter painted, and then the yeah the electrician came back one more time to just fit off all the. Uh, last bits and bobs with the electrical outlet sockets like the covers and stuff. So the key message of this video is that if you do plan to convert your garage into a tiny house or in a living space or if you build a brand new house uh, in itself then have a real good think about you know where will the TV go, all the appliances, coffee machine, where do you want to have power outlets and, and then make sure you put them in the right place. Don't be like me where every time I exit the bathroom, I have to use my cell phone now, swipe up, put the torch on and then walk to the light switch um, so that I don't trip over. So yeah, that's the key message and that brings me to the end of this video. So I hope you got some value out of it. If you did, leave a like or some comments and I'll see you in the next video.